Welcome back to part two of our head gasket slash intake gasket assembly installation. Uh, start putting things back together today. We finally got our heads back from the head shop and uh, it took a little longer than, than I would have liked, but the quality is really good. So uh, I've already started, I put one head on the driver's side and this morning we're going to do the passenger side. I'm going to put your eyes on it here in just a second, show you what I've done so far, um, tell you some of the challenges I ran into. And so uh, this will be part two, the finale of the intake gasket, head gasket fiasco. Welcome to A&A. Got our heads back from the shop. The driver's side I've installed, torqued it down, and it's it's good to go as far as ready for timing chain and timing set. Uh, you will have trouble with one of the head bolts here. It files out with the with the steering shaft. Now we had trouble with it when we were removing the head, but as you're removing the head, the bolt just came with it and we could get it out. So it's, uh, it's a little problematic trying to get the head in and, and maneuver the bolt around the steering shaft. So what I did was go ahead and put the head in place, uh, run your bolt down as far as it'll go. It'll, the head of it will file out right here. Go around to the wheel well. I'll just take you around there and show you what I did. You go around to the wheel well. And it's this bolt right here. It's filing out with this. And if you'll just if you'll just pick up on the head, the bottom side of the head, if you'll just pick up a little bit, the bolt will go ahead and fall in as far as it'll go. Put your head back down, and the bolt will finish finish going down into the block, and then you can thread it in. Uh, as you see, I did not go with the shorty headers. Um, the good quality ones were out of my price range for this particular project. Um, I did buy new exhaust manifolds. The other ones were warped pretty bad, and they can usually sand those off, but the inside of them was pretty caked up with uh, carbon buildup and all that kind of good stuff. So I purchased these. They're supposed to be stainless steel. Uh, I went ahead and put a just a light coat of high temperature paint on them. Um, new exhaust cast iron or, or stainless steel manifolds, exhaust manifolds, new exhaust manifold gaskets, um, new studs, new uh, stainless steel. Exhaust manifold studs in the head with stainless steel nuts. Uh, the studs get torqued to 120 something inch pounds. And then the nuts get torqued to 210, 220 inch pounds. Uh, so all that's been torqued, it's that this head is, is installed So today we're going to continue on with uh, getting this one torqued down. And let me tell you how the torque goes. Uh, you have a sequence, and it's you can you can look it up on the internet. You can find it, you know, everywhere. Um, basically, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Step one is you torque the bolts down to 30 foot pounds in sequence. The next step is tighten an additional 90 degrees in sequence. Step three is you loosen all the bolts one full turn. Step four is you retighten all the bolts in sequence to 30 foot pounds. Next step is tighten an additional 90 degrees in sequence. And the last step is tighten a final 90 degrees. Um, what you're trying to do is pre-stretch the head bolts. Um, that's why you always want to use new head bolts. The old ones will have already stretched. I've never known anyone to have a head bolt failure from having reused the head bolts, but the right thing to do is to use new head bolts. That way, when you're going through these steps, you're pre-stretching and you're not overstressing an already stretched out head bolt. It's a little tedious. Um, Definitely for this old guy, it's a little strenuous, but anywho, we're fixed to torque down this head right here. Then we're going to move on to the timing set. And as you see, I've installed an oil, the oil pump down there. Um, you will have to drop that oil pan to make things easier on that uh, oil pump installation. Uh, so... Let's get this head torqued down. Then we'll get our timing set and start going through that. Um, the other challenge I had getting getting the passenger's head on is is all of the the wiring and the heater hose. I chose not to disconnect simply because it's a real pain to get back there to that compression uh, hose clamp. Uh, you'll have to wrestle with that, trying to get the head in place with all that garbage back there in your way um yeah the guys that know exactly how this thing comes off and exactly how it goes back on i'm sure that it would have removed all of that stuff to make it easier for them but you know I, i've got a i've got enough parts laying around that i got to figure out where they go back so i chose not to do that anyway we'll get those torque down we'll get you back Okay, we're back and we got both heads torqued to spec. 30 foot pounds, then 90 degrees, then loosen them, then 30 foot pounds, then 90 degrees, and another 90 degrees. Once you get to that last 90 degrees, they're getting uh, pretty hard to, to turn with the torque wrench, but... Um, that's how you can tell that they're stretched and they're they're getting to where they can uh they'll have the they'll have the uh proper torque on them so got those ready now the next step is going to be the timing set uh which goes here on the front of the engine timing chains actually loop around the cam gears there's a chain here then it loops around this cam gear chain guides on each side and there are um timing chain tensioners so over here we've got our new timing set also have the new water pump it's going to be easier you can see better if you wait about putting the water pump on until you get the timing set on and the timing cover back on then you can put the water pump on otherwise it's just going to be in your way uh, those are the two tensioners timing chain tensioners um, right now they're in their closed position you see this pin right here it's called a grenade pin you guessed it you pull the pin out this plunger pops out so you do not want to pull that pin until everything is installed your chains are on 
uh, then you pull the pin to put the tension on the chain. New guides, guides, uh, timing chain on each side. And then this is your, this is your, uh, this is the last thing you put on if you don't put this on because this is your uh, crankshaft uh, position gear. Um, if you don't put this back on, you'll be tearing everything back apart because your truck won't crank. So here's our old gear that goes onto the crank end of the crankshaft. Um, so one timing chain. One cam gear is slightly offset than the other, which allows for the two timing chains, one to be behind the other one. So this is our old one. The kit comes with two uh, because this kit is basically for both the 5.4 and the 4.6 liter Ford engines. So just make sure you're matching up your old stuff to make sure you know what the new one that you're going to use. So we're going to use this one because it's identical to our old one. I say identical. Uh, the new one, see if you can tell, they've punched a timing mark right there. That's not a mark, that's a stain. Timing mark, six o'clock position on your keyway. Your old one, the six o'clock position on the keyway, and they just have a groove cut. It's the same thing as we're putting the timing chain on. I'll show you how we line those up. But that's our timing set. So uh, first thing we're going to do, we have to get the we have to get the crankshaft at the bottom in the correct position. Then we have to get these camshafts in the correct position. Uh, there is an orientation that you have to have them in for the chains to match up. I've installed the top guide and I've torqued it to 29 inch pounds, which is not a lot. So don't, uh, you know, don't go crazy on this stuff. You don't have to, you don't have to go to a full Ooga Booga 29. You can go crazy and go 30 inch pounds. Top guide, 30 inch pounds. Upper guide, passenger side. 29 foot pound, uh, 29 inch pounds. Lower guide, driver side, 29 inch pounds. All right, so I um, wanted to show you uh, the key to timing uh, these Ford engines. Uh, your timing chain is color coded. You have a colored link here. You have two colored links here. This is the gear that goes onto your crankshaft. You see that timing mark right there? That's a stain, so don't look at that. That's the timing mark, that's the indention, and this is where the keyway goes. So you put the driver side on first. So that's gonna be your it's gonna be your inside gear because this is gonna face out towards the front of the engine so you want to line up that time and mark with that colored link just like that so what we'll do is we'll slide this onto the crankshaft and our <coughs> cam gears you'll see that indention on the cam gear right there that's your other time and mark right there that cam gear, or that time and mark on that cam gear, has to fit between the two colored links. That's all there is to timing these engines. Uh, the same is for both sides. Now, here's what we're going to do. When we slide this onto the crankshaft at the bottom, with our with our time and bottom time and mark lined up with the timing mark indention. And we lay our chain if this doesn't line up with the timing mark on the cam gear then we will have to rotate the cam shaft until it does and you have to be extremely careful because these cam shafts are spring loaded 
um, because of the valve springs and there's a special tool to hold them so that they don't uh, rotate quickly and cause damage inside the engine so put the special tool on it to keep it from uh, from rolling over quickly and we'll line these up and once you do that uh, then we'll we'll move on to the passenger side do the exact same thing we'll put these other guides in uh, they just snap in place and then uh, we'll put our time and chain tensioners in there I had good luck on the driver's side once I put the gear on, put the chain, lined up with the timing mark, and I wrapped this chain, I lucked up and my timing mark landed right where it's supposed to. On the passenger side, I wasn't so lucky uh, putting the chain on the gear, lined up with the timing mark, um, I'm a good bit off. Um, You'll see the indention here's the timing mark and here's where it needs to be so I have to rotate this camshaft clockwise uh, to get it in the right position now you know I said these things are spring-loaded so if I rotate too far it'll slap around and it could drive uh, a valve into a top of a piston and so what you have to have is this special uh, camshaft holding tool or uh, well I don't know what else they're called but it's a camshaft holding tool uh, that block goes around the camshaft uh, the legs rest on the deck of the head there and you tighten those bolts snug and it pinches the camshaft and keeps it from turning so you just get them you get them pretty snug and a 3 8 um, extension will fit uh, in here and that way we can take this chain off and we can rotate it slightly to get it to where we want it to uh, to line up with with our color-coded uh, chain the time it marks there so um, I've only got two hands and, and and I don't have an extra cameraman so I'm having to and there's no place to put a tripod in here so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this, uh, get them lined up, and then uh, I'll bring you back in here. But uh, show you down below. <clears throat> you see our timing mark uh, in the gear right there. There's our color-coded link in the correct spot, and this one has a little bit of slack on it, but... Once we take the slack out, it is also in the correct spot. So, all I got to do is rotate that camshaft, get it lined up with the color-coded links, and we'll be good to go. Bring you right back. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we got our timing mark between our color-coded links. Um, now, work that it's probably still under some spring tension because I don't want to remove that tool yet. It's still, with the slack that's in the chain, it still could slap over and uh, damage a valve or a piston. So we're going to just, we're going to leave it right there for right now. And then we're going to get the our other, we've got two more guides to put in. They snap in. Then we have our time and chain tensioner to put in. Uh, once we pull the grenade pins on those and they have tension on the time and chain, uh, then I'll take that tool off. And we will have timed it, and then we will get to putting the timing cover on. All right, bring you back. Okay, it's time for our other guides, and there are two, and they look almost identical. With the exception, if you hold them side by side, one of them's higher than the other one. The one that has that little ear on it right there. They don't both have the ear. This one has the little ear that goes on the driver's side. The white plastic goes toward the chain. So the chain glides up and down on this plastic right here. 
So this is driver's side, that's passenger side with the white plastic facing the chain and then we'll put the tensioners on. So let me get these in place, bring you back. Got the driver's side upper guide on. It just slides over this dowel and then uh, the chain, which I, I took, had to take the slack out of one side, put your 3 8 extension in there, had to take the slack out of one side. So I made this side tight and this is your slack side. So then I, I got the guide in there on top of the chain, slid my tensioner, timing chain tensioner in there. There's a little pocket in your guide right here that it pushes on. So just make sure the little plunger from your tensioner is sitting in that pocket. Uh, then make sure, you know, everything's still lined up. Make sure the chain is in the, in the guide, uh, the tensioner's in the pocket, your timing marks are still lined up, and then you uh, pull the little grenade pin. These uh, are torqued 18 foot pounds or uh, 216 inch pounds, I believe. And they are, um, there's a, there's a right and a left. You can see this one it has an L on it. That's for the driver's side lift. All right. So all we got to do now is the same thing on this side. We'll put our guide, our tensioner and torque it to 216 uh inch pounds so bring you back got the passenger side done uh got those torqued we'll pull that grenade pin out so now there's tension on the chain uh just double check before you start uh putting your timing cover on and sealing stuff up just make one more check that your timing marks are lined up here and then go down below and make sure nothing's moved and then you'll have to I'll have to do some acrobatics but you need to make sure that the colored links are still where they're supposed to be and once you do that then you've got some uh You've got some areas where you're going to have to put a small glob of uh, a gasket maker and it has to be the oil resistant kind because where the head joins the block without putting a nice glob of stuff right here, it's not going to seal. Of course, the other side over here needs it as well. Down below where the oil pan sticks out <clears throat> your timing cover is gonna is gonna take those four bolts right there <clears throat> and so you're gonna put a have to put a glob right there at the corner glob at that corner a glob there glob on the other side right there so you've got to do that before you seal your timing cover up or else it's gonna leak there I can guarantee you um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my globs. I'm going to get my timing cover. I'm going to put it on and then we're going to start torquing the bolts. There's a sequence to the timing cover. Uh, there's a torque spec for each one. So I'm going to put my globs. I'm going to get my timing cover. Get you back. Well, it's starting to look like an engine again, kind of, sort of. I uh, got the front cover or the timing cover, whatever you want to call it. I got it back on. Got uh, the bolts in the correct position. I've got them torqued. And there is a the there is a specific order and a specific location for the screws, the bolts. Um, this is a identification chart and also the torque specs um so you definitely want to follow that closely because uh this cover is aluminum and it's not that thick so you definitely want to follow the torque specs 
and the bolt locations for that because not all the bolts are the same. As you can see, uh, they're definitely not all the same size. Some of them have, are, have studs on the other end and some of them don't. So, um, okay, got the front cover on. I believe what I'm gonna tackle next is getting the valve covers on. And that should be challenging, not so much this side as this side with all of that mess in there. So anyway, let me try one, I'll get you back. Looking more and more like an engine. Uh, got the passenger side valve cover on, which I thought was gonna be pretty difficult with all of that mess hanging in the way, but it's really not. Uh, you just kind of slide your, your valve cover under it all and kind of, you know, try to hold it up some while you get your valve cover in place. Um, once you get it set down, go around to the wheel well. And this is another good thing about removing the wheels and, uh, you know, and the splash guard. Uh, you get up under here and make sure that there's no wires or anything else pinched in the valve cover uh, between the valve cover and the head or else that'll be a sure, surefire leak. So nothing's pinched, you know, wiggle it, make sure it's in place and seated the way it's supposed to. And of course, there's a torque sequence. Um, it's a nice pretty hand sketch I drew there, but uh, it's 96 inch pounds. And these valve covers have, as you can tell, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of bolts in them. Uh, as far as leaks, you you don't get a whole lot of leaks from them because the and I'll show you on the one that I haven't put on yet. The gaskets are extremely good, and on this particular valve cover, there's 14 bolts that hold the cover on, and that's a lot. But um, there's 13 on the driver's side. But let me take you in here. Let me show you on the one that we don't have put on yet. So this is the gasket. Um, the valve cover has a groove. The gasket is made so it fits in the groove. And then we've got this nice double edged surface here that goes on the head, the surface of the head. Your, your bolts, uh, your bolts are made such that this, the, the washer is actually, uh, held in there by a flange that's on this, uh, valve cover gasket. And it's, it's a pretty good chore to sit here and get all of your your bolts and this isn't actually a washer um but anyway it's retained in here by your valve cover gasket and it's it's a it's a pretty decent job to get all of those in there and get the little retainer around your around your washer your your bolt if it wasn't for those holding the valve cover gasket on in which you know this not going to fall off if it wasn't for that uh you would probably have a devil of a time getting the valve cover on and you know not having a complete meltdown with the gasket getting all whopper jawed on you so anyway we'll get this one on next all right looking more and more like an engine got both valve covers on got them torqued there's the one on the end of the valve cover on the back side on the bottom down there. You're not going to be able to get your torque wrench in there. Uh, by the time you torque everything down, but that one, you'll have a really good feel for what the 96 inch pounds is. So you should be able to do it by feel then. So it's, I don't think it's a, uh, I don't think it's a, a real problem, but. So that's what it looks like so far. Um, we got a couple of, oh, I'll say a couple. 
we've got a lot of sorting out to do with uh, what comes next as, as far as, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that, that need to attach to these studs uh, on the NZ bolts. Um, we got a power steering pump that we can now put back on. Of course, the reason it was taken off in the first place is you can't get to that bolt with the power steering, power steering pump bolted on there. So that's why you have to take the power steering pump loose. We'll probably get that back on now. Uh, start getting some some things reattached. Uh, I want to keep the I want to keep the wiring harness and everything out of the way right now because um, we're going to get the intake and put it on here, and I don't want uh, I don't want all that all that stuff in the way yet. So uh, let's see what we can clean up under here. Get a few more things done. I'll get you back. I didn't want to get too far ahead before I, before I brought you back in. Got my power steering pump uh, connected three, uh, three bolts down there. Um, got, uh, you'll see right there, those power steering lines. Uh, there's a bracket that goes on that stud. Got that on. Um, this is part of your air conditioner. It's got a bracket on it. Got it on that stud. I believe the next thing is going to be to get the uh, harmonic balancer on. Then I'll probably put the water pump on. And then we'll get started looking at putting the intake on. And we'll go from there. Got the harmonic balancer on and the water pump. Ha harmonic balancer, you'll have to uh, you'll have to get you a nice big hammer to get it started. Uh, it don't just slide all the way on. You're gonna have to beat it on part of the way until the until you can get your bolt uh, threads to catch. You can't you can't start out with the bolt because it's not long enough. So you have to beat it on part of the way with the hammer. So you get three or four threads caught on the bolt and then just get your uh, impact wrench and just uh, you know go wild with it uh, I just maxed my impact wrench out and got it on there nice and good and you can look down what, what you're what you're aiming for is these pulleys have to be in alignment because that's where your belt's gonna run so uh, just get that harmonic balancer on tight as you can it's good to go. I would mention that uh, rub a little grease on the uh, on the the back part of this balancer, where the seal, the new seal that we put in our front cover, uh, that back part of that harmonic balancer is where that seal rides. So put a little grease on your seal, and then put just a thin layer of grease on that uh, back side of your harmonic balancer that sticks out. Uh, so when you slide that in there. Uh, it's not dry, it's, it's gonna have lubrication, so when you start the vehicle, you know, uh, you've, got, you've got lubrication on the seal and on the, uh, on the, and on the balancer. Uh, the water pump, it, it has an O-ring. Uh, I just lubricated the O-ring on my water pump with a little silicone. Uh, just don't, wanna, don't want that O-ring to go in there dry, it could tear, uh, and the edges of this metal some of these new parts is really, really sharp. So took the O-ring off, just put a real thin coat of uh, silicone grease on it, put it back on. That helped to get the, get the oil pump slid in there. Four bolts, tightened down to 229 inch pounds. Uh, let's see, what else? I think we're ready to start looking at putting the intake on this thing. Uh, there is, there is one thing we have to do, and that's back here. Uh, there's a bracket on that water pipe. There, there's two brackets. One there, and there's one there. I have, I have two bolts with studs left over. And that's where these go. 
There's gonna be one on the end of the head there. The other one, like you can barely see it down there. And so that's what these will attach to. And then, uh, big, big, uh, big note here, your grounding strap is attached to the firewall. This will, this will be attached to the end of one of these bolts. So, uh, grounding strap, very important. Uh, make sure that's connected. Some of this, you know, some of this stuff is, is a little overkill. Um, you know, they try to keep everything secure in the course of driving a vehicle, you know, hitting bumps and, and what have you. And so some of it's a little overkill and some of it you can skip, but we're going to, we're going to try not to skip anything. We're going to try to at least get all of the critical items. And then if we skip something, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's no, no problem. But anyway, we're gonna try not to skip anything. Gonna get those, gonna get those two brackets on back there. Put these bolts back there. Get those brackets on. Get the ground strap attached. Um, then I believe we're ready to mount this electrical stuff back up there. Um, a lot of people take, you know, all of this stuff off to give them more room. But if you just lift it up, you can get all this stuff done. But I do need to reattach that stuff back to the firewall. Uh, so we can start, you know, buttoning things back up, getting ready to put this intake on. And uh, then we have electric cooling fans to mount in here. We have our, our radiator is out of the vehicle. We've got the fans. We've got to get those attached, wired up, all that great stuff. We have uh, all of our fluids need to be uh, filled. Motor oil, engine coolant. Transmission fluid, all that stuff's got to be refilled and uh, and checked before we before we hit the road. Uh, and we will not start the engine until we have oil pressure. Now the trick to that is down here. Now you can barely you can barely see it. It's right there. That is your crankshaft position sensor. The last thing we put on before we put this timer cover on, the last thing you put on is a um, tone ring. It looks like a gear. It's not a gear. Um, it's a tone ring that that goes under the keyway of your crankshaft. It can only go on one way. There's a word that says rear. Some of them say rear, some of them say front. Just make sure if they say rear, they're facing the rear. If they say front, they're facing the front. And that's your crankshaft position sensor that's reading that tone ring. So, unplug this. Crank your engine over until you're reading oil pressure. Don't start the vehicle and then look for oil pressure. That's, that's no good for all of this work that we did. It's going, the engine doesn't have oil circulating in it yet, so we do not want it to start. We want it to turn over, build oil pressure without starting. Once we see the oil pressure, then we'll connect the crankshaft position sensor, and then we'll start the vehicle. At that point, we'll let it run a little bit. We'll shut it off. We'll check our fluids, add where, they, add where it needs to be added. Uh, we'll do all that stuff, uh, several safety checks before we hit the road. So hang on. Let's, uh, let's put some more stuff together here, and I'll get you back. Well, it's really starting to come together now. Uh, the bracket I showed you in the back, we got uh, both of the stud bolts uh, back into the head. Got my ground strap attached. Um, trying to sort out the heater hoses. Um, when you disconnect your heater hoses from the firewall in there, you might want to make note of which one came off of where because you got two connections there and you got two connections right there and you got two heater hoses so i'll have to do some research on that i didn't mark which one came off of where so that's my bad and but anyway uh i don't have the bolts uh the intake's not bolted down yet uh, I just got it sitting up there. I was checking it for fit. Uh, fits good right now. The uh, the new intake came with. You see the bottom the bottom of the intake. 
as it's, it's down, it's, it's in there. See, the top of your block is right there, and it's not sealed off. If water gets in it, there's no way for it to drain out. That's the bottom of your intake. Well, they had a, I'm assuming it's just a protective shield. This was on the bottom of it, and it was on there pretty good. Uh, it was attached very well, and I assumed it was insulation, you know, to uh, protect your intake from the heat because you, you would like for your incoming air, your intake air, to be cold. Um, but the intake will not fit properly with that on the bottom of it. So it took a minute to get it off. Um, I did look at the old intake that came off of the truck. It didn't have anything like that on it. So I removed that insulated shield. The intake fits much better now. So I, I'm guessing that you're supposed to remove that. There was nothing in the instructions uh, saying that. So anyway, remove that before you try to put this on. It will fit much better. Uh, so I got to get the old bolts. I need to clean them up. Uh, then we're going to go through the torque sequence and torque this down. And then we're just going to be cooking with gas. You know, we're going to plug the fuel, plug the fuel line back in, uh, in the back, back there to the fuel rail. Uh, we're going to start, uh, we're going to start connecting the stuff in the back. I uh, got some PVCs to connect, uh, PCV valves to connect. Uh, got some other hoses we got to get on and, and do some plumbing work there, but uh, it's coming together. Gonna get the bolts torqued in, take down. Made a little progress this morning. Uh, we got the first of all, we got our fuel lines reconnected, um, and just just a tip. Um, you're gonna put you're gonna want to put a little motor oil just a dab around that o-ring and put some on your pinky finger and put it inside the that fuel rail those two uh connections right there helps those o-rings uh slide in there without tearing uh so just dab a little motor oil on there uh we got our our new coils we got new spark plugs new coils uh, the injectors that we sent to uh, Mr. Injector, uh, we've got those in there. Um, we got all the connections for the for the fuel injectors and for the coils plugged in. Uh, see what else we can tell you here. Found a, you know, once you start once you start plugging stuff in and 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 finding where things go and you start narrowing down, you know, plugs that need to be plugged into something. It starts looking a little better, feeling a little better. Um, just remember like some of the things that are going on these, on these studs right here. Um, I'm finding things that go on there. So I'm going ahead and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm connecting and I'm tightening the bolts and all that good stuff. Just remember if you know, if you find something as you're putting it back together, as we get further along, something else needs to go on there. It's no problem to back that nut off and, and bolt it up. So when you're sure about something, go ahead and get it connected. There's nothing in the book that says you can't take that back off and reconnect something else as you go. It's looking good. Um, next, we're going to, we're gonna connect the heater hoses. Uh, there's some, uh, PCV hoses that need, to, that need to connect. There's one that goes uh, in the, on the driver's side and there's one that goes in the passenger side. Um, and there's, there's, there's some vacuum lines and stuff like that um, that we're gonna need to reconnect. Uh, it's a purge valve right there, so there's gonna be some hoses connecting there. Um, and you know, be careful with, with some of these hoses because they're original and some of them are a little delicate. So, you know, be careful when you're, when you're pushing and pulling or you will tear one. 
uh, the EGR tube pipe. Um, it's connected down below to the exhaust manifold. It's also connected up top. Uh, I'll show you that as we get the uh, as we get the intake on. It connects to the EGR valve. Um, so lots of lots of good stuff still to do yet, but everything's going good so far. It's looking good. Um, I'm pleased with the quality on on the on the stuff so far. So hang in there. Got the throttle body bolted back on, 96 inch pounds for the four bolts that hold it on. Uh, a little bolt here in the front. I just went ahead and did it for 96 inch pounds as well for this bracket. Got the PV, PCV hose that runs from the back of the intake, runs over to the passenger side, plugs into the grommet right there. Got the heater hoses reconnected. Um, got the PVC, PCV hose reconnected to the driver's side. Uh, these two tubes right here, if you'll remember, they came out of the uh, they came out of the old uh, air box. Um, so we're going to be putting cold air intake on this. So we'll see see how we need to do that but got the uh the vacuum line tree that runs to just about everything uh connects like there connects up there connects here connects here connects here but i'll tell you though it's amazing it's kind of like uh it's kind of like putting together you know a small piece puzzle i mean Right away, you don't know where every piece goes, but when you put one piece, the next piece is easier. And I mean, it's it's made to go in one place and it's kind of all formed itself either by the factory or through 20, 20 years. I mean, it's formed itself to fit a specific way onto a specific piece. So, you know, don't, don't ever be scared to, to tackle that or really any project because you think there's too many pieces. There was a lot of pieces in this, but the uh, EGR pipe, I put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads up here and down on the exhaust manifold. Um, that takes an inch and a quarter. Um, it takes an inch and a quarter wrench. Um, you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to kill yourself getting that tight. You just want it snug up here and then the exhaust manifold, you know, you're only going to be able to get it so tight um, down there. So that's it for right now. And so next is going to be getting the power steering reservoir uh, mounted back to this bracket. We've got our uh, throttle cables. We've got to get those mounted back to the intake or the throttle body. Um, then we're going to start putting some accessories back on. I did put the belt tensioner back on yesterday. Got the water pump on. We'll have to put the pulley back on that. Get the alternator back on. So it's going together uh, pretty quick. It's going together pretty easy. So I would say if you have uh, some mechanical ability, you, you can definitely do this. Just take your time label your stuff of course i didn't label all my stuff but if you label all your stuff it'll go quicker get you back well i'm going to call it complete um as far as the intake uh the head gaskets all that good stuff goes everything's back on now what isn't attached is the the air uh intake hose and filter because we're going to do a cold air intake uh if you want to see a video of that you know subscribe comment let me know what you want to see so um 
other than that, which that's where those tubes connect, we don't have the radiator hoses on yet because we're doing an electric fan conversion on, uh, on the radiator. We're going to do electric cooling fans. So the radiator's still out. So there's the transmission lines, haven't been connected. Hoses, radiator hoses haven't been connected, uh, obviously. So, but everything else, as far as the intake gasket, intake manifold, head gaskets, uh, all that good stuff is complete. Job finished. Uh, wire harnesses bolted back to the firewall. Everything is as it should be. So, have any comments? If you have any questions about what I did, what to do, if you want some help, want some tips, whatever, uh, feel free to comment. And thank you for watching. Tell your friends about us. Please subscribe. If you want to see the video of the uh, electric fan conversion, please let me know if enough people. I uh, want to see that. I'll, I'll be glad to, uh, to put some videos up of that. Have a good day. Subscribe and be safe.